Hello, welcome to a session of Digital Slide Surgical Pathology. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel, and our program is part of the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy, which is made possible by the Digital Pathology Association and PATH Presenter. I'm going to tackle a topic today uh, in an area where I've occasionally had problems, um, and uh, it's in the realm of soft tissue. Uh, our patient is a 65-year-old uh, woman who has presented with a retroperitoneal mass. Now, this is a fairly common circumstance uh, in our uh, oncologic practice. Uh, she has no history of other neoplasms and on radiographic imaging, it looks as though it's a confined tumor with uh, abundant uh, lipid uh, on MRI scanning. Um, a biopsy is done and this is what we get. Uh, we get a uh, bit of fat with an awful lot of myxoid tissue in between. So this uh, challenge of uh, myxoid tissue, retroperitoneal tissue, not a lot of atypia here, uh, is a challenging uh, feature for many people. Um, and uh, I will admit that uh, myxoid tumors have uh, long been, been a bugaboo in soft tissue. Uh, for me as they are for, for many individuals. So what should we be thinking of? Well, let's take first a look at what occurs in the retroperitoneum in terms of soft tissue tumors. We know the most frequently encountered lesion is the well-differentiated liposarcoma. Uh, this can have the differentiated areas and thus present in a higher grade uh, manner. Uh, we also see on occasion lyomyosarcomas, lyomyomas, angiomyolipomas, often associated with the kidney or picomas, of course. Um, there are nerve-derived uh, tumors, peripheral, malignant peripheral nerve sheath tumors, schwannomas, neurofibromas, and so forth, as well as desmoplastic small round cell tumor, undifferentiated pleomorphic sarcoma, inflammatory myofibroblastic sarcoma, and compostiform hemangioendothelioma. Uh, now, if you haven't seen everything on that differential from the retroperitoneum, it's because some of them are decidedly more frequently encountered than others. Um, and certainly, I can uh, only think of, you know, a handful of cases where uh, I would have even considered hemangioendothelioma in the differential diagnosis. Looking at this from the other standpoint, what are the myxoid soft tissue tumors that we might encounter? Well, uh, myxoid lyomyosarcoma, that certainly can occur. It's an uncommon variant of lyomyosarcoma. Low-grade fibromyxoid sarcoma certainly has myxoid in the name, uh, usually more superficial, not retroperitoneal, um, somewhat nodular in growth pattern. Myxofibrosarcoma, uh, which can be quite myxoid and has a high-grade appearance usually. Myxoid extraskeletal chondrosarcomas can occur uh, and certainly could occur in the, in the retroperitoneum, though more frequently in the extremities. Uh, myxoid liposarcoma, of course, has myxoid in the name, and then pure myxomas or mesenchymal chondrosarcomas with, may have a little bit of a myxoid areas, and there probably are others uh, that we could think of as well, but I think these are the uh, most frequently encountered ones uh, that we think about. Uh, however, as we think about these things, um, you know, lyomyosarcoma, well, I guess that, that certainly has a retroperitoneal uh, possibility. Uh, but these other tumors uh, are decidedly rare in the retroperitoneum. So um, we have the choice. Are we going to think about uh, an uncommon appearance of a common tumor? Are we going to think about the common appearance of a tumor, but in a very uncommon location. So uh, this depends a bit on the clinical scenario in which you live. Uh, if you live in a referral center like ours, I mean, it may be a little bit more like the zoo, and so uncommon tumors, uh, uncommon locations can, can occur. Uh, even the uncommon appearance in an uncommon site occurs with from time to time. But by and large, uh, if you're a betting person, uh, more frequently than not, you'll come out uh, by thinking about an uncommon appearance or presentation of a common tumor than you will of uh, a tumor at an uncommon location or an uncommon tumor uh, and an uncommon presentation. So this lesion was resected. 
Uh, and here we have a portion of uh, the kidney, as you can see here. Uh, it's uh, abutting that. Uh, and as we look at this tumor, uh, we can see that there are some fibrous bands here. Um, now this uh, slide represents um, uh, only a small portion of the tumor. Um, but I think as you can begin to see here, we do have some of these atypical stromal cells, such as you see here, within the fibrous septi that uh, would uh, lead us to uh, consider or think more seriously about uh, well-differentiated liposarcoma. Um, these are the features that we tend to look for in these fibrous bands, uh, maybe with a little atypia in the fat now and then, although that's not a reproducible finding. Here's another area, and again, we see uh, a little bit of myxoid change here, but uh, several atypical cells here in this uh, fibrous tissue. Well, in fact, the majority of this tumor uh, did not look as that slide did, but looked more like this, uh, which uh, certainly would explain our uh, biopsy findings. So as we look at this, we see uh, large nests uh, cohesive little cords of tumor with abundant myxoid tissue in between. Uh, this certainly is what we were seeing on our biopsy. Um, a little bit of a vascular pattern and so forth here. So is this really a mixed, well-differentiated and myxoid liposarcoma? Is it a pure myxoid liposarcoma uh, with just a, an atypical uh, component? Uh, or is this all, in fact, uh, a uh, well-differentiated liposarcoma with a myxoid change? Uh, well, uh, the way to answer that uh, in this case involved a little bit of immunohistochemistry and a fair bit of um, uh, molecular testing, fish testing, to look for the characteristic markers for uh, these diseases, uh, the two that we're thinking about here. So with uh, well-differentiated liposarcoma, obviously we're looking for uh, evidence of uh, MDM2 amplification or rearrangement. Um, and in fact, the FISH testing for that uh, was positive. Well-differentiated liposarcoma is prone to recurrence as well as this uh, dedifferentiation into a higher grade tumor. And so uh, resection prior to becoming that dedifferentiated is uh, pref preferred. And certainly, once you detect areas of dedifferentiation, you want to make sure you uh, excise those uh, lest they metastasize. Um, I mentioned the MDM2 uh, amplification being a marker. And this is a, usually a ring chromosome, occasionally a rod chromosome that is uh, made up of material from 12Q13 to 50. Usually, these are adult patients. And the characteristic finding, as we saw in the first slide there, is the atypical cells uh, within the fibrous septi. There's a variety of subtypes. Uh, this would be kind of more the lipoma-like, uh, although you can have very predominantly sclerotic fibrous uh, types. You can get inflammatory types and mixed types as well. And occasionally, you can get a kind of low-grade differentiation that results in a sort of appearance of a lipoliomyosarcoma. We've seen that rarely in our practice here. And high-grade dedifferentiation is uh, certainly more frequent. Um, in addition to the uh, um, molecular genetics fish testing, uh, sometimes uh, P16 testing can be helpful, uh, as in this case, which shows a nice, uh, very strong uniform positivity within this myxoid component of the tumor. Uh, this would not be expected to be found in myxoid liposarcoma and can help uh, early on to rule that out and uh, guide your further pursuit of immunistic chemistry if need be. So uh, just to think about uh, the differential, differential diagnosis in this lipomatous subtype, um, <clears throat> we've mentioned um, myxoid liposarcoma, uh, which of course is negative for the MDM2 amplification, but that would generally have a FUS gene rearrangement. Um, and typically this is not encountered in the retroperitoneum. It's almost a reportable case if you have a uh, definite myxoid liposarcoma in the retroperitoneum. This is usually extremities, more superficial, and so forth. 
Uh, these other lesions, lipoblastomas, younger patients, lipomas are usually superficial. Angiomyolipoma usually would be HMV45 positive and would not, of course, have the MBF2 rearrangement. Massive edema is a localized massive edema is a different presentation. And likewise, spindle cell lipoma uh, with loss of RB1 is very uncommon, if uh, at all present in the retro perineum. So our final sign out diagnosis, uh, despite our uh, initial biopsy diagnosis of uh, low-grade myxoid lesion, uh, was in fact well-differentiated liposarcoma of the retro perineum with extensive myxoid changes. Um, and uh, the uh, resection margins were actually pretty good in this case. Um, and so we'll hope that the patient does well with a prolonged period without recurrence. Well, that's uh, today's case, and I hope that you enjoyed that. If you like this, please uh, hit the subscribe button and uh, share your comments. If there are things you uh, have encountered in this differential or questions you have, please feel free to share them. Uh, we try to respond to those and always appreciate your sharing this video with uh, colleagues or friends who uh, may have to deal with these questions as well. Uh, so until next time, thanks so much for joining me.